name, the exchange of information on professional, managerial, and administrative activities, as well as techniques and skills among members and maintain link with the university administrators and managers of other bodies involved in higher education. The long and short of it is funding. There is no way you can have a functional education at the level of uh, tertiary institutions without funding. You fund university, you fund polytechnic, you fund college of education, you get the best. So if you want your institutions to perform, you have to fund them. If you want your institutions to perform, if you fund, they will be attracting staff. So funding remains the answer, the ultimate answer to effective tertiary education performance. First and foremost, it is statutory for a new party as an association to, to train its members. That is our mandate. And so we have these trainings lined up uh, for junior and senior categories every year. Uh, so for this year, this is the one for senior category. And you cannot have any meaningful training if you don't have the uh, capacity. And the capacity here includes the resource persons. So we know that we need to bring them up to speed, and that is just the basis for getting the best resource persons for this particular uh, conference. The situation that we have in the university system today in Nigeria has a lot of uh, prospects and challenges. And these prospects and challenges has also defined the culture and the eroding ethical values in the system. Uh, in a sense, the academics will always say that the tradition of each university should be sustained, there should be autonomy in the system. But we need good leadership, we need exposed leadership, we need committed leadership in the university system in Nigeria. For us to be able to properly define what is academic tradition in relation to bureaucratic norms and principles that sustains institutions. As long as the system is not properly organized, as long as the system does not allow all stakeholders to play their role, it will have a negative effect on the outcome of the products that, you, that comes out from that system. To be blamed. Are we sure we are not culpable? This is a misnomer. This is something that we must stand up to fight. And, and this is why you need to take interest in those who lead our dear is not for those that are not intelligent. And this is the problem we are facing today. At least some of us have been taking part in the accreditation exercise. Outside the teaching requirements, there are other personal issues. Did you employ the right person? We have presented that. And lastly, before I sit down, Mr. President, any student looks for any teaching staff, he must have encountered 10 non-teaching staff in line. You are working for one. The person you are working for cannot work for, is not expected to work for himself. He is expected to be guided, he is expected to be advised, he is expected to be assisted, and he is expected to take the final decision on the matter.
But if he does it by himself, without your input, without your advice, he's in trouble. That's his corporate governance. He's, he, the advice chancellor is not expected to act on any matter or to take a decision without an advice from the registrar on administrative matters, if it's financial matters from the post. Sorry, Abros Ali University, Ekoma. So he's ready to deliver his uh, paper. Please enjoy the paper with us. Prof, we are here with you, and I know you can hear us. Please go ahead. And administrators, I want to appreciate the Association of Nigerian University Professional Administrators for inviting me. I would have loved to be there in person for the course of the call of duty I'm able to come. Uh, this is going to be my lecture outline. Let me not bore you with that. We are talking of post-COVID area. We are familiar with the recent declaration by the WHO that uh, declared that the COVID global health emergency is over. COVID period, we saw a shift. Everything all our activities were now concentrated on our health. Even budgetary resources shifted from education to health. But because of our time, uh, I will grab the indulgence of the audience that we allow for maximum four questions for each of the presenters. Gamma Manupa Chapter, Adeliki University. Yes. Can they allow me to corroborate the submission of all the presenters by commending them for a, a job well done? My, that's the first one, just to appreciate the good work that they have done. And the second one is like, is a request that to the, all the, the three presenters that they should please send the soft copies to the email addresses of all of us, like myself now. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Omada Margaret from Kogi State University, Aika, now Prince of Bakar University. I have a question for Professor Azeke. And uh, my question is so simple. The two key words in that topic is digitization and digitalization. I want to know the difference between the two, if any. Between digitization and digitalization. Uh, pay attention, please. Digitization refers to the process of converting physical information into digital format. Converting physical information into digital, digital format. Why digitalization? is the use of digital technologies to improve processes. is Akonko Lewis from Michael Gore University of Agriculture. Standing on as a simple I just want to ask Dr. Babatola just a question. I saw that in his citation, he is a member of the Association of University Administrators, United Kingdom. I wanted to ask, do you need to be an administrator in the United Kingdom to be a member of that association, or can we, if we can, from there, be so, we we'll need that advice. Thank you. Full membership, concessionary membership, and international membership. The only membership you can belong to, since you are not working in the United Kingdom, is the international membership. It requires you applying for the membership on the website auha.ac.uk. Please, that website is www.auha.ac.uk. The first is, you narrated an idea here, and a good number of us are facing such an idea, where the Vice Chancellor will call you and teach us instructions 
to you. And teach out instructions to you by passing your registrar. And the registrar sees you as an enemy. Maybe you're bypassing your boss to go to the vice chancellor. At that point, you don't even know who to obey. Whether you're obeying your PC, who will threaten you, or the registrar. Secondly, sir, there is this problem between DBC administration and the registrar. We have most of the duties of the registrar is shifted from the vice chancellor to the DBC administration. And the registrar struggles to grab back what belongs to her. Or deal about bypassing registrar. I still want to go back to it. It is not compulsory for your registrar to like you, but it's compulsory for you to be absolutely loyal and subordinate to your registrar. Same thing with working with your registrar. Problem with DVC admin. It is an unfortunate issue where it happens. A DVC admin was not employed as an administrative staff. He is an academic staff. Whatever function is performing as an administrative role are functions to assist the vice chancellor, not to take over the function of registrar. A registrar is the chief administrative officer of the university. First of all, my name is Shinari Wine from UNM. I would like the second speaker to throw my light on uh, what it means by these academic administrators and professional administrators? Uh, now, the difference between academic administrators and professional administrators. This is a fact. Like I talked about corporate governance, we have governance in the system. The governors and their, their counselors constitute the governing council. Um, this question came in from one of the participants. Uh, she said, what is the position of the registrar in the university? In my university, he is number four, including the plate number of his car. If he is, if he is supposed to be number two, how then can this be corrected in my university? Uh, well, I think, let me attempt answering it, but I think in the course of uh, Dr. Papatola's uh, presentation, I think he made one or two things clear. In the principal officer's hierarchy, where we were told there are only four principal officers. The vice chancellor, the registrar, the bosser, and the librarian. So in that hierarchy, the registrar is number two. Yes. Uh, here, Mrs. Uh, Edpo is asking that. Is the university indeed autonomous? Uh, once you are now an institution, to operate without interference, we regard it as being autonomous. Regardless of the level of interference that may be directly or, or indirectly uh, involved. Well, I would, uh, I must stop perhaps at the level of appeal, at this level, to appeal to the federal government. As it were, you listen to the national president of uh, SANU. At the trade union level, they are doing their own little best to now actually push government to act. As a professional association, we have our limitations. We have our limitations. There's a limit to which we can speak to government. And if they choose to listen, fine. Rather, I would encourage that uh, the Nigerian masses should actually also should not see university education 
as charity, they should be ready to pay for quality education. Indeed. If you look at the time now, it is uh, almost some minutes to 7 o'clock. And uh, I have been in this uh, Anopa Sabu for so long. I have not seen one that have lasted up to this moment. That tells you the quality of the lecture delivered today. Splendid. Wonderful. You see, we continue to say it. Difference between actors themselves. In this extant case, we invited registrars to deliver the lectures. And two registrars, two registrars, two registrars have been administrative officers to the court, gave lectures. And you could see the people, the participants enjoyed it. Even till now, they are still, most of them are still glued to their seats, listening attentively to the lectures being delivered. So it's been a very wonderful session indeed today. At this point, I want to appreciate all of us. Uh, I want to appreciate all our chairmen of sessions. I also want to appreciate all the participants, the red members who have worked, who have toiled day and night to make sure that this has been a huge success. Uh, at this point, I would want us to all appreciate all our presenters, including Professor Azeke, how has he been there? To give them a very thunderous applause, please, for having attended well to us. I also want to thank you for your patience. It's been a wonderful day, and I'm sure we have learned one or two things from Sanu to our past uh, president and to also our colleague. I remember in Lagos, we contested an election, and the Jebu people did the Jebu thing again. But here we are today. It's a family. And uh, we love one another and we love to be together. Yeah, yeah, sir, <laughs> thank you very much, sir. We cannot thank you enough. Now go this, sir. God bless you, sir. On behalf of all these, your brothers and sisters, and those who are not here, we say thank you for coming and we give you this. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. So on behalf of all of us, I present you with this. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for clapping. Um, in academics, they say high flyer. In administration too, we have high flyers. And that's why we have people coming to make wonderful presentations. We enjoy your presentation and we look forward to seeing you again. I'm sure you are enjoying Ajay Crowder because uh, you look different from the time we have that. It's a thing of joy we are happy to see you again. On behalf of all these wonderful people, Seated here, I present you, please. Stop The National President, distinguished guest lecturers, members of our I'm sure you will agree with me that it's been a very splendid and wonderful night. As a matter of fact, when I looked at my watch, I now saw seven o'clock on the dot, and I now shouted, Wow! And we still have many of us very, very attentive, still eager to take more of the lectures. I want to commend you. That is the we want. Well, prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as in Father, we are here before you once again. Lord, because you started with us in the morning, Lord, we are concluding with you this evening. We want to say thank you, Lord, for our direction. We thank you, Lord, for your protection. We saw us through all the stages. Father, in heaven, Lord God, we have made the success and we thank all glory to you. The S-Chain of Information.
2023 senior staff administrative and workshop training. We have the entire theme as re-engineering administrative process in the present university environment. And we had a lot of soft sections that deals with digitization and digitalization of our processes. That's a very interesting uh, lecture that I enjoyed because everything is going digitalization, digitization in the new, uh, new normal. The exchange of information on professional, managerial, and administrative activities as well as, as, well as techniques, techniques and skills, and skills among, among members and maintain link, link with the university administrators and managers of other bodies involved in higher education, locally and internationally. And internationally. The President, Association of Members of the Council, Chairman of the new session, second session of the workshop, distinguished members of the, the Association of Nigerian University Professional Administrators, members of the press here gathered. I shall attempt this morning to wear the big shoes of a senior colleague, the substantive registrar of a Usumanu Dampodio University, supported. The topic for discussion today, that have been well chosen for discussion today, like the master of ceremony has read to us. First, in the course of writing this paper, I subjected the topic to what I called, in quotes, acceptability test amongst a sample of senior professional administrators across ranks. A takeaway from the test is that the topic be reframed to encapsulate institutional framework vis a vis the aging realities of bottlenecks in our public universities. The essence of Anupa is uh, it's all about university system. Uh, we have uh, close to 200 universities in Nigeria, and as we know, universities are expected to be exemplars when it comes to academic excellence. And in a way, it is expected that staff within the university system should also exhibit excellence in all, their, in all activities. Uh, it is in response to this that I brought ANUPA. Uh, ANUPA is all about university administrators who are holding various positions in the university system. I'm introducing to you the president of the student association, Dr. Victor Ben Kuma. Dr. Victor Kuma Ben is a seasoned and experienced university administrator in Justin, formerly known as Federal University, before joining the Justin in March 1997 as an administrative officer. Dr. Pem rose through the ranks from 1997 to become a deputy registrar in 2010 and is currently a director in registry in Justin. The experienced, versatile, and dynamic university professional administrator has not only worked in major units of the registry, of the registry, establishments, student affairs, academic affairs, registrar's office, vice chancellor's office, colleges, stroke centers, but has also served as several university commi committees, either as secretary member or a chairman or chairman. He also held elective positions of secretary to the staff multipurpose cooperative society in Justin, as well as branch chairman of ANUPA in two different universities. 
where he was on sabbatical. That's Federal University um, to Sema, where he was. I'll be as brief as I can. The paper is Even just now, somebody just said the registry has So, for example, if I can the system has a registry as a the registry is a scribe unit that recognizes the register. doesn't talk of directors, deputy registrars. What is collaboration? It is a process of two or more people. Hence, this organization working together to come and fix a task or achieve a goal. In our situation, in the universities, we carry out the responsibilities. We know uh, when we do our things, we are measured, our performance is measured. We can be given rated A, B, C, depending on how we perform these reforms. It's a new style. It's a workaholic, not like the one before. And then, what are we saying? You try to introduce new things that will help us to sit up. If we were sleeping like the city, have become part and parcel of what? At all. With that, we know that so many things have changed administratively. Uh, solution, we are solving it. When you try it and it works, it's an innovation that somebody has got. Isn't it? They will say university registry is generally defined as a place where registers of the university goes, not in the pre administrative sense. Many things happen in the university. The environment is a structure of both social and biological phenomena. The structure we have in place allows us to navigate and achieve what we are meant to achieve if all things are equal. So we say depending on the university, the direct images that surrogates all of us state here from means the number one citizen of the district as representative in the board collaborating for excellence. That's the main issue here. To achieve as a corporate body. It is not an innovative and interdisciplinary method. We come from various backgrounds, humanities, social sciences, and we have different organizations. We have different approaches in our um, Those handling crises as a unit that work as contributors and they come up with the finest and best results. So that is why we say it is built on community system. So the essence is to harness all ideas available to arrive at best results. Then share for learning. People who do not know are brought up to speed so that they are on the same page. It's just like uh, if you take two people, one, to make people know that their innovative ideas are required. But some people, if you don't ask them, they don't take it. It is not that uh, our evaluation is not uh, so subjective, but so, so uh, is it difficult? No. We can set, set targets for people because we will say that if it does for your benefit, the benefit of your living, it is for the benefit of your university, so don't keep it uh, leadership. Give clear purposes for what you are doing, that is intentional leadership. Make everybody understand from the beginning that this are your... That some, sometimes change may be negative, isn't it? The chairman, national president of San Jose, that paradigm that registry will control to control, is the one that oils even the collaboration we are talking about. Because if they reach the same, they say administrators have the dress code. But my wife is always behind the sleepers. So there's no harm in this. I will be sad, isn't it? So be a model in appearance, in conduct, in everything.
then be humble their seniors, but encourage them to give you useful advice as I went to. Definitely, not everybody will share the same vision. Conversion goes to the law conversion goes to the power of the mass institution. And I said my question is three, in that why into one. The first question is, why do you have vice chancellors or why do you have chancellors who are just ceremonial heads in universities and in most cases traditional rulers? Two, what is the major role of a chancellor when we already have a vice chancellor? Three, why should pro chancellors be the chairman of governing councils when we have chancellors who are second in the organograms after the visit? When he was doing this presentation, it seemed there uh, it seemed that a bit a bit so because when he was talking about hierarchy of authority, that is the organogram. If the organogram presented, it showed that the registrar told us that deputy vice chancellors are not members of uh, the principal officers of the university. I want to please to clarify us which one do we adopt? Because sometimes we find out that we grant it that you are supporting this, especially when they are due for regularizations. Some of the questions we ask them we do this type of it's increasing our IGR. With the introduction of many financial regulations or policies by the federal government, what role can we as administrators in the register play towards ensuring that our IGR, our various investments, are enhanced? Thank you, sir. I have three questions for the astute proxy presenter. The first one is, one of the challenges he highlighted was an uh, accidental administrator. Who is accidental administrator? This workshop has been effective. And then uh, the speakers have been very, very, very good. They have met the standard. They have not disappointed anybody. To talk to some of the participants, they will tell you that they have enjoyed this training and they look forward to more research. So as far as this training is concerned, to God be the glory, I won't say 100%, but I'll say 90%. I give that 2% for human imperfection. But honestly, it's been quite good. I will say that we've done well. And uh, why do I say that? In everything in life that you see improvement, the performance has been very, very okay. And um, you see the innovatives and the improvement as we meet from conference to the workshop. Just like we are doing, we are having this training here today. Wonderful presentation. The facilitators have covered all that need to be covered in the registry and the university at large. It is knowledge acquired that is going to be useful not only to the senior staff but also the junior staff as well. So the senior ones that are here present today would want to go back to their various institutions to impact the knowledge acquired not only to their immediate colleagues but also to their subordinates as the university system is one and uh, all knowledge acquired either from top to bottom or bottom to top it's what is expected of any good administrator from all the lectures heard you have seen that there are new innovations in the university administration which must come into play for effective administration. And that is why we are here to train and retrain our senior staff. Nobody is above training. You must learn till the day you give up. And that is why we brought them here to train them. Everybody must be retrained because there are new innovations every day. And change is dynamic.
That is why we are here. Thank God. That's my man. We went very smoothly. Although we had to share his issues in the morning, we rally ran to rectify it. And from the statement of the participants, everybody enjoys the exercise. We are happy with it.